We are going to begin to act beginning today. Extension of my illustration uh, worked for the past seven years. So since I first began shooting with the DSLR camera, it has brought me to some interesting locations, some dangerous, some exotic, and uh, it's been a companion to my curiosity and a way to blend imagination with reality. Uh, please play this slideshow, which it, I guess it's playing. <laughs> now during the course of this talk, um, I'm going to explain some of the creative and technical barriers I've experienced and how with our respective style and techniques, um, we can evolve our, our style and techniques if we push our creative limitations. So uh, this is the image that first got me cur curious about light painting, and you can change the slide please. So it's uh, Picasso drawing a centaur. And basically I stumbled across this image in 2007, and, uh, and I asked one of my friends who was a photographer, how this was done, and he explained to me long exposure photography. So um, basically we did a couple experiments, and uh, this is the first light painting that I had ever done. It was shot by Michael Brown on uh, October 14th, 2007. It's not very impressive, it's a generalized life form and it looks like we're shaking hands because that was my introduction to light painting. Now, this is exactly what I was going for here, and as an amateur, I was thrilled at this result. Um, after seeing this image in the back of my camera, a new passion for photography started to grow. Change the slide. And basically, over the next few years, I brought my first DSLR camera and practiced as much as I could. Sometimes with friends, other times alone. A lot, a lot of times with my girlfriend, Jordan, over here. She would uh, bring a sleeping bag and I would just go out for the night for hours at a time and we'd come back and uh, we'd have all these images that we've captured. Now every night was an opportunity uh, to create something beautiful, um, something romantic, something funny, even though I wasn't really good with a camera at first, technically. So during, uh, during university I, I studied film, I never took a photography course. I had to learn this over time. Uh, lots, lots of mistakes were made and often the images I cre created were out of focus, underexposed, overexposed. I shot many terrible photos and every now and then, miraculously, a good one. Um, this image was uh, indicative of my beginnings with light illustration. I started by doing simple stick figures. So they had this uh, heart in the center of their chest. And that was the first stylistic challenge to myself, was to illustrate a heart in between the light lines every single time. Now, once I got to the point where I was illustrating it every single time, um, this was the beginning of the evolution to uh, my light illustration stuff. Now, um, let's see here. Eventually, through trial and error, um, I got much better at exposures and I started to uh, learn a lot about composition and color temperature and how I could expose an image without uh, bringing it, without too much light coming into the picture. So I learned a lot from other photographers around through the internet and, um, and just experiencing it with other friends that shot long exposure photography. I would often uh, explore abandoned buildings with friends and try to make larger than life illustrations, interacting with the environment whenever possible. This image was a joint effort with photographer Jeff Morris where we came across a flipped over vehicle. It was around then that I realized one of the most interesting effects with light painting is that it can have real interactions with the environment. Uh, during this time, most of my illustrations were fairly simplistic and it became clear in order for me to pro progress artistically, I had to experiment with more complex shapes. As I started doing this more and more, I gradually evolved from the crude stick figures I had drawn in the past towards a more line drawing technique. I would do outlines in 2D rather than attempting any sort of three-dimensional illustration. And uh, it was great for adding characters into the environment, uh, similar to what would be done with pen and paper. 
They were basically doodles, and uh, the first experiments were extremely difficult. It was hard to get the light shapes to line up correctly. Now I had no reference for where my illustrations would be in relation to the camera lens. So I started using my body as a template for where the characters would be. Um, it was like projecting them from myself towards the lens of the camera. And you can change one more, please. So for this, it was uh, skull for skull. It was ribs for ribs, and it was arms for arms, legs for legs. And after some time, they began to get more complicated. And I would, uh, I would try to fit them within whatever environment I was in. Here they are at a graveyard. And uh, one night, I attempted a light illustration so complicated that I had to study and sketch it a couple times before trying it on location. This was more pre-planning than usual. And my first try took about five minutes and it looked like garbage. It wasn't very good. But the second try, it turned out much different. That's not it. Um, the light was all out of line and I couldn't really tell what it was at all. But the, yeah, the second, the second try turned out different. And after this, it was clear what direction light painting was headed for me. Um, I like the look of detailed skeletal figures against real life locations. So I took the next logical step and tried to illustrate a childhood favorite of mine, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now, uh, the first take wasn't very pretty. The lines were disjointed, but the pieces were all there. So I tried again, mentally keeping track of the areas I needed to focus on a bit more. And the second try turned out a little different. Now, this started a series my twin brother called Light Fossils. And I could bring them to life wherever I was at night. Um, please, the next one. A lot of the times it took me many tries to do these, but I was relentless. I kept on trying until I would get one right. And that's kind of the case with most light painters out there. We're kind of relentless in the sense that we have this idea in our head and we need to focus on getting it done. So um, basically I started to do these light fossils everywhere. Downtown rooftops, I would go to the forests of California at night and uh, I would I would go to like local parks at night, wherever I could to get them to uh, sit within the environment. Now after many light fossils, I began to feel like they were starting to look the same and I needed to break the mold. So I thought more about three-dimensional illustrations and uh, how I could give my light subjects depth. So during my search for this new idea, I thought about clay and the way that uh, pottery makers would uh, use a ceramics wheel to produce simple vases or complex shapes and, uh, and they would do this by circularly spinning a point round and round. Now uh, theoretically the same could be done for light so my next, my next experiments were with angels and uh, this one, well, this, this is an example of pottery, but this is my next example of, uh, of angels in more of a three-dimensional shape. I also used to uh, reference the poses of ballet dancers and uh, how to articulate their forms with focus and grace using a single point of light, similar to the way a 3D printer works. So I wanted my characters to basically live and act out their personalities, but I, I wasn't sure how to do it. Um, so I started experimenting again. Basically, I, I went to uh, animal figures because I thought they needed to be a little bit more complicated. I did insects as well, and then sea creatures. So after kind of mastering this three-dimensional technique, I thought, okay, like, what's the next step here? Because these are getting a little boring. At this time, it's kind of, it's, it's not moving. I feel like it needs to move. These characters need some personality. So what's the next logical step? I thought, well, 
if I do like 18 to 20 in a night, then maybe I could do some animation. So this is my first try with animation. And during the middle of this, a security guard top stopped me and said, OK, you have to move along here. So I didn't actually get to finish the entire animation. But uh, what was supposed to happen was the skeleton was supposed to raise his arms all the way up and come back down. And there were supposed to be multiple arms to be revealed. Now, that was cool, but uh, I thought there's probably a way I can push it a little bit further. So I'll take something that I know how to do, skateboarding, and um, maybe I can have you know, them do that. Maybe I can have them break dance. <laughs> But I think uh, skateboarding was, uh, was the real kind of like factor that kind of, um, it made it real to me. And it was cool to see them interacting with something in the environment. This one? How many images? That was about, well, which one? <laughs> the skateboarding or the breakdancing? The breakdancing one was about 18 to 24 images. So it's somewhere around there. And then the skateboarding one, maybe a little bit more, maybe more like 26 images. But what was important is the progression of movement, not necessarily the perfection of every single character in the frame. So I continued with this. And um, basically, this is like any, I mean, it's like, it's unlike any other medium. And the way that it reflects off of the hood of the car and glows in the concrete. Um, during the day at work, I would start sketching my wildest dreams. And uh, during that night, I would start filming them. So the most difficult ones were where the camera moved simultaneously as the character. So now that we have like all this animation stuff, where do we go next? Um, after about a year of compiling all these different animations, I came out with a light painting animated film called Light Goes On. And that was a compilation of all of the most difficult animations that I've done together. Now after this, it's kind of like, what's next? So I feel like what's possibly next is uh, it's kind of going backwards to be going forwards. So I've done a lot of the sculptural work, and I've done some of the animation work, and I feel like the next step is to take the sculptures and make them move, rather than just the two-dimensional illustrations. So these are my next experiments with, uh, with a more sculptural look. So we have a horse. We have a man running. I wish we could play this over and over again. Uh, and then we have a dolphin flipping. But this is the direction it's heading, and I'm very excited about it. Now, uh, at this point, I think I'd like to take some question and answers um, briefly. And then after that, I can take some requests if you guys want to see any dinosaurs on stage. Dana, what do you got? The light goes on film. It was supposed to be screened here <laughs> last night, but I don't think it happened because there were some time delays. Um, and right now, I think we're also facing a bit of a time delay. So um, you can watch it at DariusTwin.com on my website. Um, and then, what's that? It's only a minute long, also. So can you pull it up? Let's watch it real quick, actually. <laughs> All right. So, any other questions here? <laughs> here, actually. I have it here. We can pull this out for right now. Try that.
All right, we have a little difficulty here because we need to hook up the wireless. This isn't really something. Okay. We're not going to be able to show light goes on right now. It was supposed to be screened later. We're going to move along to, uh, to some illustration work. So at this point, I'm going to hook up my camera and do a bit of illustration work in front of you. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. Can we dim the lights, please? Yeah. Thank you. Can we dim the lights? Thank you. Okay. So let's see if this works first. So I'm going to start with a practice dinosaur. We're going to go with a Velociraptor starting up. And then after that, I can take a couple requests for different dinosaurs. You guys ready? <laughs> All right, let's give it a try. All right. Is it tethered? Camera. Should be. All right. to restart the program. Now we're beginning. <laughs> now what I'm doing right now, pulling up an image on my phone for reference of the dinosaur that I'm going to illustrate. So the, for the first one, I'm going to try to illustrate a raptor. And starting now.
Thank you. I'm glad that worked out. <laughs> Do I have any requests for any particular dinosaur? I'll give you a couple options. We could do a T-Rex, we could do a mammoth, we could do a saber-toothed tiger, or a triceratops. Those are our options for right now. Let's hear by a round of applause, which one? We'll start with the mammoth. Not a popular one. <laughs> All right. How? <laughs> okay, okay. How about a uh, saber-toothed tiger? All right, that one's pretty popular. <laughs> okay, and how about the triceratops? Okay, I think saber-toothed tiger won. So we're gonna do a saber-toothed tiger next. Can we please dim the lights again? <laughs> Thank you. You can see that a lot of the shapes are generalized, but they're all there, and it varies from time to time how they line up. Do we have any other requests? Any particular animal?
A what? <laughs> a different. Oh, like a pterodactyl. All right, all right. Let's give it a try. Next up, pterodactyl. Again. It's kind of a big surprise every single time I try this. But I've done so many at this point that it's generally all there. All right, so maybe we can do, we can do one more and then we'll call it it. <laughs> a rhino? Ooh. Let's see. Yeah, I could try it. <laughs> I'll give it a try. I don't have that one on my phone. I'll just draw it. All right.
No phone reference for that one. All right, well, I think that's it for right now. And if we can pull it up online, then we will be able to do this. It's only about a minute long. Uh, at this time, I'd like to take a couple of questions and answers. Um, and it can be anything, really. Does anybody have any questions about technique or uh, kind of what led here? Or <laughs> yes, my arm gets very tired, especially after the animation stuff. Uh, do you think to? Just about the colors. About the colors? about the colors? Colors, because I, I, I look to your job and I really admire your job. Uh, but I always see just one color. You just use these. Do you think to use more colors in your drawing or not? Why you choose only these kind of the same light resource? Just, just a question. Um, that's a good question. And I've used different colors in the past to varying results. But I feel like the white light is, uh, is kind of a staple of a lot of my work. And the more I experimented with other different colors, the more complicated it became. Where I feel like where it should be complicated is in the actual design, not necessarily the different colors. At a certain point, I felt like um, some of the multicolor stuff that I was doing was almost too busy. It, uh, it didn't quite look correct to me. Although there is a place for different colors to be used, I feel like, especially with the fossils, uh, the fossilized stuff and the skeletons, white light just comes across so much clearer than anything else. In this show, you show us uh, two dimensional drawings. Uh, how do you move the light for the three-dimensional ones? For the three-dimensional drawings, yes. um, like I spoke about earlier with the ceramics wheel, this is kind of what I was thinking with that technique. And the way I would start it is going from head to toe of whatever subject I was creating. So I would start at the head and slowly move the light, Moving. kind of weaving a web of this complex character. And uh, the more complicated it could get along the way, the better the design would come across. There was a point where at certain ones, I would try to give them faces. So you would start at the top and think about three-dimensionally how a face is constructed, right? So you have the forehead, mm -hmm. you have the eyes, you have the nose, and I would try to kind of move by light in this kind of a pattern uh, all the way down the entire body. So in your, in your mind, uh, you take slices. Yes, absolutely. Much like a 3D printer. Uh -huh. So if you think yeah. of the way that the 3D printer works, mm -hmm. it works on you know, three, I mean, three dimensions, it's, uh, but it's only a single point that's printing out this entire complex shape. So I was thinking about the way that light works, and I have a single point right here, but the shape that I create can be infinitely complex. Um, it just takes a long time to do it. But if you're willing to put forth the effort into creating something like that, it can be done. You just have to think about it in every step of the way, much like a ceramics wheel or a 3D printer. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what do you use for the, uh, the, for reference? When you draw, you use your body or, some, uh, or just a paper or? It's a combination of the two. It depends on what I'm creating. Um, for a lot of the skeletal work that I was doing with a human light form, it was very easy to use my body because I'm roughly six feet tall, and if I extend my arms, it's about three feet. And, uh, and I would use these dimensions um, while I was creating these things. So I would go, okay, my eyes are right here. I will do one eye, and then another eye, and then where my skull nose would be, that's where this skull nose would be, and then the teeth, and then the face, and moving down the body to all the other parts. For the, uh, the moving stuff, with uh, the skateboarding animation I'm about to show you, 
It was easy for me to think of because I had skateboarded for many years in the past and some of the movement um, I would see in different skate magazines and stuff would be sequences. So it would be step by step animated images of real people that I was just kind of thinking of when I would do my other illustrations. So for me, uh, an ollie is a basic trick on a skateboard where the skateboard jumps and that process looks like the weight goes on the very back, right? Pops up the skateboard, the skateboard comes with, and uh, slowly the knees move up with the skateboard. So it was that kind of a process that I was thinking about when I was doing this animation that I'm about to show you called Light Goes On. Now, uh, <laughs> I think we have it all queued up. It should be ready to go. And if we want to dim the lights, I can show you. It's only about a minute long. It's what? OK, the, the audio needs to be connected as well. And can we dim the lights, please, one last time? <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much. And I think my girlfriend's queuing up this uh, advertisement I took part in. But I don't know if you guys want to see an advertisement. It does involve light painting. It's not to the very end. <laughs> uh, let's put on the... Let's queue up the 31 second commercial. That one's it. The one that you're on. Yep. But maybe we can set, we can fast forward it to the end. <laughs> we have to watch an ad to watch an ad. So let's let's queue it up at the very end. Yeah, that was about two seconds of work. <laughs> So you can see light painting has some commercial viability as well. Um, it really just helps to, um, to push it forward and I think this evolution and keep on experimenting with new ideas because that's what we do. We just kind of pursue our creative endeavors and try to push it as far as we can. Thank you so much Oviedo, thank you so much Light Painting World Alliance and Frodo. May the light be with you. <laughs> epic battle is ended. Thank you, good night, and farewell. <laughs>